First, let's begin by just getting your reaction to what's unfolding right now. We are seeing an unprovoked attack on a democratic country. This is a military escalation in Europe that we haven't seen in decades. Your reaction? Uh, it could be the largest uh, since the Battle of Berlin in 1945. What we've seen so far is uh, air attacks, uh, missile, air, uh, airplane attacks on cities. That could be part of a shock and awe effort to get the government to collapse in Kiev uh, so that Russia can install a puppet government. Russia may be hoping that this will have an impact, a psychological impact that will be quite strong, but the Kremlin is probably underestimating the resilience and courage of Ukrainians, and this would not be the first time uh, it did that. The Kremlin would prefer not to have to send large land forces across the vast expanse of Ukraine. The West has provided a lot of anti-tank and anti-armor weapons. Uh, the Russians would lose a fair number of those, uh, those tanks and armored vehicles. And then certainly the Russians would not want to have to go into urban combat because high casualties would be quite high. So the Russians seem to be starting with what they hope is a shock and awe uh, attack that will solve the whole problem. Bill, in your view, is there anything that the United States or the West can do at this point to stop Russia's military action? The West will probably uh, consider providing more military supplies uh, to Ukraine, anti-armor, uh, perhaps uh, more anti-air weapons. Uh, those are the kinds of things they've supplied so far, and those are the kinds of things that Ukrainians uh, need, and they know how to operate those weapons. We've also learned in the past hour that NATO allies are going to be meeting to discuss what the Secretary General has called a reckless and unprovoked attack. Stoltenberg saying, once again, despite our repeated warnings and tireless efforts to engage in diplomacy, Russia has chosen the path of aggression against a sovereign and independent country. President Joe Biden has also responded in the past 24 hours denouncing this. He's called it unprovoked and unjustified. Of course, Ukraine is not part of NATO. The US has already said it won't be committing troops there. So what do you believe happens next from this point? I think the, uh, the military supply factors, uh, the sanctions that will be announced. Uh, today, sanctions were announced on a couple of the large banks Probably the largest bank, Sparebank, VTB Bank in Russia will be hit by sanctions next. It's important to remember that finance is the central nervous system of an economy. So while your reporter earlier pointed out that uh, energy wasn't being sanctioned yet, financial sanctions uh, will have a significant impact on energy as well. Sanctions announced earlier on in the week had a limited impact when it comes to deterring Russia. What makes you think, think, think a new round of sanctions would actually help here? Because the scale will be much larger. Uh, already the uh, impact of the, the current sanctions uh, is roiling financial markets uh, in uh, Russia uh, and the exchange rate. Uh, the new sanctions will likely really take most all of their big banks out of contact with the Western financial system. Uh, this could be devastating for a country that exports as much and imports as much as Russia does. And President Putin has also threatened other countries with consequences that they have never seen should they interfere with this military action that is now underway. Uh, Bill, in your view, is that nuclear signaling? So that's probably uh, uh, something that would be in the cyber domain, especially because Russia is strong, has a comparative advantage uh, in that area. Uh, but the West and a lot of other countries have built-in resilience in their cyber systems. So while there can be uh, attacks such as uh, denial of service attacks in Ukraine, which we've seen recently, uh, those can be recovered from fairly quickly. So long-lasting attacks that would take down an economy uh, in other countries, that's unlikely. And what do you think this means for the future of European security? Uh, the NATO alliance is going to be even revived even more. Uh, we could see the United States uh, uh, change its approach. The United States took a lot of troops out of uh, Europe uh, after the Cold War ended. Uh, there could be uh, congressional pressure to change that. Uh, there would be allied pressure to do that. The, NATO members in the Central and Eastern European area are all asking for more forces. Uh, the U.S. has already said that it's shifting some troops 
in Europe around to provide more forces uh, in Baltics. So I think the, one of the results of this is going to be something the Kremlin did not want, which is going to be a much stronger NATO presence uh, on its European border. And Bill, when you look ahead, is it likely in any way that Russia could actually take Ukraine in a meaningful way? They would have difficulty occupying all of Ukraine. It takes a lot of forces to do that, far, far beyond what they have at present. Uh, so I think their main goal was to try to uh, bring Ukraine to heel, and that would be you know, encircling and seizing Kiev, installing a puppet regime, and trying to quell resistance. The West has talked about supporting an insurgency that would not be hard to do, both from the Carpathian Mountains in Western Ukraine and from uh, neighboring states such as uh, Poland, Slovakia, Romania. Uh, so it would not be an easy occupation for the Russians.